So next, we'll talk about the types of funding. I believe we all already know the different kinds of funding there, but for, for emphasis and for reading, uh, for some understanding that we need to grab as we move into this webinar, we have to go through the different kinds of funding. And uh, we have the link, which is debt. And this, we all, this is what money someone gives you to invest in your business and you pay back within a stipulated period of time with interest. So this typically has no, um, you, you don't get to lose uh, part ownership of your business. You take the money, you use it for the specific purpose for which you took the, the loan from the, the bank or the individual, whoever it is, and you pay back the loan with um, interest. Uh, so we have different, we have the low interest uh, loans, we have mid interest and we have high, in, high interest. And as a business, you have no business going any close to a mid interest or high interest loan. Uh, if at all, you, sh you should go for a loan, then you should be looking at um, a low interest loan, which are often um, offered by government in partnership with, um, with um, so, uh, probably industry, bank of industry uh, and merchant, uh, all those kind of um, uh, separate specialized banking that is still up towards empowering small businesses. So you can actually get a loan from a bank or from family and friends. We also have equity, which where you get money from a funder and you give off a percentage ownership of your business. And uh, this is typically something you can get from family and friends. You can get from partners as who would uh, bring in money to uh, get a part ownership of your company. You can get it from uh, incubators and uh, accelerator programs. You can get it from uh, angel investors, uh, from VC investors. Now, a, uh, angel investors and VCs, uh, there's often, people often ask the question, what is you? Okay, so, but I, I will get to where, I'll get to the part where I would emphasize on that. Then we have the grant prize award funding. And this is where we lay mo most of our emphasis. Uh, most of the opportunities we publish on After School Africa are mostly opportunities that are uh, grant funding opportunities for businesses. So in this case, you don't pay back uh, the loan. It's free money. You don't pay back the money. It's free money you invest into your business. And, um, and usually this kind of funding comes with lots of other benefits. Like uh, you get to mentorship access, you get a fellowship program where you uh, mingle with other business owners, you get opportunity to get exposure uh, in your industry. So this is um, a, a, fund, a type of business funding that is gonna make a significant Im impact in your business when you are able to access them. Okay, so we have the African Business Euro where the, the, the most successful business in the program takes, uh, takes from $300,000 and uh, the runner-up takes away $100,000. And um, depending on where your business is, this fund will make a significant dif uh, uh, difference in your business. Uh, the African business heroes is, is still at uh, it's 300,000. 300, 300, so it's... Um, it's, the program is still currently ongoing and um, it, the selection has been done up to the top 20 out of 21,000 applicants. So yeah, these grant programs can be competitive, but if you follow through the right steps, I can assure you that you can get through at least to the top 100 or the top 50. And then your interview and other other uh, the viability of your of business can give you the step ahead to scale into the, the next level. There's also the Gen Small Business Grant programs, the Tony Elumelu Entrepreneurship uh, Foundation program, which awards you, uh, there's a grant award and also the equity award, which comes with a, uh, different terms and conditions. There is Seed, uh, seed Star award for entrepreneurs in sustainable development. So some of these funding opportunities are specialized. Some of them, they are funding opportunities that are specialized for agribusiness, that's grant programs. There are some that are specialized for businesses that are solving um, sustainable development programs. There are some that are so, uh, businesses in the energy sector. So you have to, you have to look for 
different funders from different uh, categories. There are some that are general, like the African business heroes is for every kind of business. There is no age limit, no barrier. All you have to be is an African who has a business that has been around for at least three years. Okay, so some of the benefits of grant funding, uh, it's free money. Uh, you get educational uh, benefits where you get training and mentorship. Uh, I, I, I was able to facilitate one of the training for, for the selected candidates for the African business um, heroes. And so you get to access to some kind of um, closed door mentorship and training and also fellowship where you you go through a, a online uh, online or offline uh, tutorial that guides you on how to grow your business. So even if you end up not being among the top applicants, you can take away the knowledge that you gain from this kind of uh, programs. There's also expert advisory. Uh, you get to, in some cases, you, you get the rare opportunity of meeting top business people who will be available for expert advice, even mentorship for your program. Uh, I know the African Business Hero had the likes of Ipua Wuhika and uh, Strive Masiwa and some other top African um, entrepreneurs. So these are some of the uh, um, benefits of this grant program. The relational uh, benefits where you have access to a community and a network and also partnership, potential partnership. And there's the experience where you get to pitch to investors uh, and you get award and recognition, which gives your business a leverage. Um, but this whole, this thing is incremental, right? You, you start probably with a fund, uh, a funding program that is maybe just $100 for your business. Now, what most a lot of entrepreneurs do is to waive these little funding opportunities because they feel like, uh, what's this money going to do for my business? But the thing is, this builds on itself. For instance, the African uh, Africa Business Heroes uh, considers applications that have uh, won a funding opportunities before, no matter how small it is. That kind of gives your business a validation. So it, it, it makes the, the, uh, the bigger guys to want to listen to you because it says that, okay, somebody thinks that you, are, you, you deserve to be invested in. So maybe I should listen to this person. So this gives um, your business some form of leverage. So when you are looking out for funding opportunities, don't rule out the little ones. In fact, often these little ones are not that competitive. So they are like low hanging fruit that you can take advantage of. So when you are applying to the bigger opportunities, you reference this as, as your previous awards, previous recognitions, and it gives you some advantage in, in your application. Okay. So that's that, that uh, on the benefits of grant uh, funding. So there are three factors that will help you determine which is best for you. It's not exactly... Uh, just rule this out or just accept this one. There are some factors you need to consider. And there are three of them. You have to consider the stage of your business. You consider the cost and benefit of the different types of funding. And also you consider uh, the business owner's motive. What is your motivation for starting this business? So we take them one after the other, um, the stage of your business. So there are uh, different stages of business for actually. We have the idea stage or pre-startup stage. So uh, at this stage of business, you should be looking at, if your business is still in the idea stage or pre-startup, uh, you should be looking at bootstrapping your business or equity from family and friends and grant um, idea competition. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about, about uh, this. When your business is still in the idea or pre-startup stage, that means your business is not yet proven you haven't gone to market, someone have not exchanged their money or data for your business. I mean, money or data, because some businesses like in the tech space uh, is measured by the number of users and not number of um, people that are paying because there is often not uh, a product to buy at the time. So you, at this stage, your business has not gone um, out there. And if you are the investor, I, I 
I think you want to give money to someone who has not started their business, uh, who have not proven the idea, to somebody you don't know. So when you're in this, you should be looking out for what we call a warm money. Your own money and warm money. Warm money is money from people that you know, family and friends who know you, who you already have social capital with. So you should be looking out for uh, funding from this kind of um, um, uh, when you are at this stage of your business. And bootstrapping is when you take your own money and you invest your money into your business and you reinvest the money uh, your business is generating, the revenue your business is generating back into your business. So you create a flywheel to get your business started. So when you have something proven, and you already you have a startup, then you can move to somebody and tell them that this is what you have, this is what you have done, and this is what you need your money to do uh, for your business. Now, it will interest you to know that um, being at the idea stage does not mean that you are disadvantaged. It doesn't mean that there are no, no persons that are willing to uh, fund your business when you are still in the idea stage. So I'm going to tell, uh, share a story of um, someone who started with who started the business in the idea stage and was able to build uh, a successful business um, out of out of that. Okay, so this is um, this is a GVE um, Energy Renewable Energy Company founded by uh, Ifanyi Orajiaka. So Ifanyi applied for the IEE President's Change the World competition. Now, this is an idea competition. So you don't have to already have a business if applying for this competition. So it's, it was an innovative idea on renewable energy, solving problems. All right, so we'll move on. So if I applied for the IEE President's Change the World competition as a student, and he won the competition, and the Y7 as a youth company, he also applied for the uh, UNDP Access to Renew Renewable Energy Challenge. At this time, I started a business. So he also won, uh, uh, funded a grant for this uh, competition. And by the time he started the business and, and business had gone out of the idea pre startup stage, he applied for other grant funding like the Power Africa US government initiative. And he also won that. So virtually he engineered and kickstarted his business purely on grants. And currently the business is worth um, uh, millions of dollars as we speak. So that your business is in the idea stage does not mean that you can't get uh, funding, no funding for you out there. There are fundings that are, are geared for towards um, idea stage uh, businesses. Uh, so you just have to look out for them to find them and to present your application in a way that uh, gives you uh, a competitive advantage. Okay. So the other stage, the next stage, uh, a business, your business could be is the startup stage. So this is the stage where your business have, uh, you have proven that you have a business. You, your business have uh, a market already. Someone has, the persons have been willing to pay money to, for your service or for your product. So you have a sort of something to show for uh, as your business that you have. So at this stage, you should be looking out for equity invest, uh, investments from friends, families, um, even angel investors. Or you can also be looking out for grants or low interest students or crowdfunding. Uh, for time, we don't have to dive deep into each one of them. But so Iroko TV is in... Uh, identify an opportunity in the Nollywood industry. The Nollywood is uh, the Nigerian movie industry. So he realized there is, um, uh, the, 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 the market is decentralized. There's a central way of creating Nigerian movies that people can watch across the globe on a platform. So he started putting Nigerian movies on YouTube. And the idea was proven at that point. So at that time, he had moved from the idea stage or pre-startup stage to a startup stage. That was when uh, Sebastian Gotha came into the picture, his friend, his uh, college friend, who uh, gave him $150,000 to expand on the business. So at this stage of the business, 
he had it was easy for him to convince someone to give him a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So if you are still in the ideas ideas stage, as much as there are opportunities out there, there are organizations that are willing to give you grants uh, if you apply to them uh, in a competition. Uh, they are willing to give you grants, but you can you, you can increase your chances when you um, go out there and prove your business, prove that you have a business to start with before reaching out to um, either investors for equity or competitions or going for low interest rates, uh, interest uh, loans from um, organizations that offers them. Okay, so the next is the growth stage. So at this point, your business has gone past the startup stage. Your business now have traction. You have cash flow. Uh, your, your revenue is growing uh, quarterly. So when you are at this stage, you have more like proven your idea. So what you are looking at is, is scaling your business to, to maybe to other countries, expanding your market and, and all of that. So at this point, it wouldn't be out of place to look out for loans when you are, you are sure of, you have a defined uh, template of what you are going to use the loan for and your uh, plan of paying back uh, the loan. And also at this stage, you can reach out to VCs. So I was talking about angel investors and VCs. Angel investors are typically high net worth individuals who uh, want to invest in startups with the potential of gaining high returns. So angels, uh, as they are called, uh, are people that find and identify uh, businesses with potential earlier on when the business is still, you know, trying to um, get its feet. Yeah, so these like people the invest. Uh, these people invest um, uh, from ten thousand dollars to hundred thousand dollars, as the case may be, uh, to your uh, business. Then the VCs are VCs and venture okay, capitalists. So typically, VCs. Uh, are looking to scale business at the large scale. So, in fact, you would have businesses that wouldn't uh, invest in a business when you are not asking for nothing less than $10 million or $30 million. So, early investors are like the first stage before you get to the business. That's when you start talking about uh, the series, uh, seed investor, seed investing, series A and series B and all of that. So, when you are still in the startup stage, you shouldn't be looking out for VCs, you should be looking at angel investors if that is what you are looking for. But at the growth stage, then you, you can uh, take your business uh, uh, to uh, VC. And also, you can also invest in grants. Uh, I was talking about the guy who had uh, gotten $40 million in VC funding, but he still made his way to um, a grant that is willing to give it give uh, thirty thousand uh, three hundred thousand uh, dollars as the grand prize, uh, but when you are applying for uh, uh, the pro programs, grant programs, you have to understand the stage of your business. I did mention the fact that uh, the three stage uh, has to which is the best for you. You have to consider your stage of business. So this business for them to be considered in a grant based uh, funding, they have to present the side of the business that needs to be considered for a grant. If they had emphasized on the fact that they got $40 million, they wouldn't be considered because why would you want $300,000 when you already have $40 million? But they emphasize on the community side, the CSR side of their business, which is uh, an impact-based CSR, which aligns with the uh, motive of the uh, funder. So for that reason, they were considered for the application. So you need to understand the dynamics of um, these uh, funders when you are uh, applying uh, to them, depending on the stage of business you are in. So some growth um, businesses that have gotten funding at the growth stage, you have Flutterwave, which is, which is uh, I believe the first African unicorn uh, to be worth a billion dollars. We have East Africa Foods, we have All, All 247, and uh, we have Euroco TV. Uh, two of them here have been privileged to have um, uh, meet some of the uh, persons uh, that are part of the, uh, the company. So uh, understanding the stage of your business is something you consider uh, to know, to identify the right investors to reach out for. So maturity stage, at this stage, uh, 
But it's possible that we have someone whose business is in the maturity stage here, uh, where your business is has grown, you are you are big, you have covered, uh, you've gained a large market share. So at this point, it will be the lending institutions who are coming to you and, and asking you to take loan from them because people want to give you money because you have a business that is proven, you have solid cash flow, you have, um, I mean, your business is, uh, is proven. So this stage of business typically acquire uh, um, funding through IPO, initial public offers and acquisition. So we have the case like Jumia was uh, acquired uh, the initial funders sold a company and um, they made a great deal of money from it. Uh, Stripe, I did mention Stripe, uh, uh, Paystack, that was acquired by Stripe at $200 million, a lot of money. So, if you're at this stage of business, then uh, you shouldn't be looking for a grant because I don't know what you'll be doing with that uh, because you already have a business that um, is successful, so to say. So, these are the stages your business could be. So, regardless, if anybody here, Every one of you here, I believe your business would fall into one of these. So when you consider this, then you consider the other reason, or other um, factor to consider, which is the cost benefit of the type of fund. Grants are typically zero cost, so you don't have to pay back. Um, zero equity, you don't have to give off a part of your company. And it comes with non-financial benefits, educational, networking, partnership, and all of that. And debt's usually less expensive compared to equity because the loans, once you're done paying the loan, uh, you don't uh, have anything to lose other than paying back the loan and the interest. Uh, but there's obligation to repay. That's a cost, an obligation. Whether your business succeeds or not, you have to pay back the loan with the interest. Uh, the benefit is that there's zero equity required, so you don't give up equity of your business. Uh, the next is the equity is more expensive because this person is taking a higher risk. If the business fails, everybody fails. It's when, when you get equity investing, you don't refund the money when the business fails. Everybody fails, including the funder. So they are taking higher risk. So they end up taking something that is relatively more valuable than the money they are giving to you. But the advantage there is that when someone invests in your business or is invested in your business on equity, they have more stake to see that the business succeeds. They want to see the business succeed. So they are going to give their expertise, they are going to give their network to ensure your business succeeds. So that's one of the advantage of um, having an equity um, investor. Okay, uh, before we move on to the uh, talk about the next one, I'll, let me just share uh, a story of an invest when I invested, the first time I invested in a business, right? Hopefully you take out a lesson from that. I, so I met this young man on Facebook who write very interesting articles about business and some a, a type of business. And I left him a comment and uh, gave him some insights on how he improved on what he was doing. And he sent me a deep, I asked him to send me a DM and I said, fine, you can go ahead. So he sent a DM and we started talking and uh, asked a few things. I gave him some tips on what to do. And in, in about two weeks, he started, he launched the business based on the guideline uh, that, that uh, he got from our discussion. And within the space of six months, he had a business that was earning him, I mean, a little over $100 per month, but it was a start. And then he came up with an idea, a business plan of how to expand the business but he needed funds to, to um, expand it to that level. At the time, he was staying at the rural area in Nigeria, which is out of town. So he needed to employ people. He needed an office space uh, to, to set up his business. So we had to agree on a one-year term for him to prove the business further, to see that the business is viable. So in a space of one year, his business grew from that hundred dollar a month to about three hundred, four hundred dollars, which was uh, showing traction in the idea. So we came up with a business plan. We reviewed it, and I invested in the business. So in this case, I came in as an angel investor, right? This is someone I, I never knew, but I got to invest in this business. So what am I trying to say here? 
when you are talking about funding, people often look at the organized space of funding. People think about, uh, okay, go to an, uh, an organized office of a VC or angel investor, apply to a grant. But the thing, the truth there is that there is a decentralized pool of funds out there. There are people who have funds that they are thinking of where to put them. They are looking for people that have ideas, viable ideas, businesses that have potential to grow, that they can invest in. You miss people, you cross their paths every time online, on Twitter, on Facebook. You chat without knowing who you are talking to. But when you, when you put yourself out there, when you make your interest, what you are about known, and when you are pushable and teachable, people see that and people take note of that. And when you are, it's, it's time for you to reach out to um, assistance or for fund, as the case may be, or for guidelines, such persons will be available to help. So when you are considering funding opportunities, look beyond the organized space. You can reach out to people that you meet on a daily basis, people you cross paths with. Even your colleague in the office can be willing to invest in your business. If you, are, if you present the right uh, business plan to them, and if you are honest, if you are an honest person, and if you have the right personality that someone will want to invest in. All right, so as a side, a side note, back to the factors, three factors to consider. Your business motivation. So why are you building a business? Uh, typically, people start business for different reasons. The first one reason, one of the reasons is income stream business. So this, uh, this is just, as a matter of fact, a larger pool of businesses fall into this category. Uh, this is, uh, these are businesses that are, that are started for lifestyle and paying bills. So you have them on the roadside. This, the owners just want to have a business that makes them money so they can take care of their needs, take care of their families, and just uh, have a, a life that is out of the nine to five. So when your business motive is um, income, it's just about generating income, then you have to consider the kind of funding uh, you are looking out for. Because typically, um, a lot of people in this pool of businesses, a significant percentage, uh, don't have a structure that is presentable to investors. So if your business is income stream B and you probably don't have a separated your bank account with your personal account and uh, you don't have proper record, financial records, you're going to struggle with attracting grants and those kind of funding because these, um, these funders and investors are looking for businesses that have structure. They're looking for businesses that is defined and is separate from the owner. So if the owner is taken out of the picture, the business can select. So you have to understand this. So if this is your motivation, then you have to reconsider how you run your business if you are looking for investors to invest in your business. The other type of, um, the other reason why people start a business is for legacy, right? This is the business you start um, to pass on to the next uh, member of your family, right? And we have a lot of these kind of businesses, some of them which have grown uh, large businesses um, that are global that we know today. And we have in some of our uh, communities, we have these businesses too, which was started by someone's grandfather, passed down to father, and then the son, who wants to pass it down to uh, the, the son as well. So if this is your motive of starting a business, then you have to be weary of the kind of funds you accept. Um, it's um, it, because you want to retain control of the business so you can pass it down. If you are uh, reaching out to equity investors, uh, you have to be a lot more careful not to give off much control of the business so you can be able to pass it down to your family. And if you are looking for a loan, which is typically what fits best in this uh, kind of businesses, then that can also work out for you. And um, if you are looking for um, equity, loan, and um, grants, uh, well, you can also take advantage of one program if your business is legacy based, but you have to, uh, your, your school may be streamlined with some programs that are more about the team that are behind your business, 
and all of that. So you have to look at the criteria of um, the uh, funder that you're applying to. Okay. And then we have the venture businesses. Uh, these are businesses that are built to grow fast and sell. So we see them a whole lot on the news. Uh, this business just raised, uh, just sold for $200 million. This just sold for $10 million, as the case may be. So in this case, the business uh, the motive is to build a business, uh, grow it fast, and sell it. And a, a very typical example is Paystack. Paystack was started, and in a space of five years, they sold their business for $200 million. I mean, that's, uh, that's uh, something significant. So these people are not building their business for legacy to hand it down to their family or just for a stream of income. In fact, some of these businesses don't even make profit before they sell them. Something like um, WhatsApp, when WhatsApp was sold, it didn't even have a product they were selling. Uh, Instagram, when it was bought by Facebook, there was no product. And several other uh, such deals have been the acquisition um, when it comes in the, in the venture space. So typically, the businesses are built to sell. So when this is your business model, then you have to um, uh, consider equity. Equity works best for this business model. You are, looking, you are not looking at gaining total control of the business. What you are looking at is growing the business as fast as possible. So you want to bring in people that are people with different skill set from yours so that they can help grow the business fast. Of course, some grant program will also accept you if you are in the legacy uh, business space. And then we have the big vision. So these businesses are philosophical. They are not looking to sell. They are looking to change the world. So we know Mark Zuckerberg, I've talked about how he wants to connect the world, how he wants the world to connect. And, uh, and with the approaches he got for sale, he never agreed to sell his business. We have Amazon, we have Tesla, we have SpaceX. These businesses are not interested in selling the company. So if your vision, if your motivation is to build a business with a big vision to change the world, to solve the global problem while you are at the end of the affairs, you have to be wary of who you take money from. You don't want to take money from investors who do not align with your vision. You want to stay in control of your business so that you can continue to drive that vision of your business. So that's, that's that when you consider the stage of your business, the cost uh, versus the benefit of the type of firm that, that are available out there and your motivation for starting the business, this will help drive um, the kind of funds that you look out for, whether you should take uh, money from uh, equity venture uh, angel investors or from uh, families in equity or for loan. Uh, or apply for grants. So just to give an overview of what uh, we have discussed about. So typically you want to start your business with your, as much as you can, with your own money. Because if you go to someone and you tell them you have this wonderful idea and uh, they ask you, okay, how much have you invested in this? And you say zero, you haven't invested in it. Why would you want them to invest, uh, bring in their money to invest in it when you are not confident enough to invest your own money? Like it's understandable that you may be at this, at this stage where you don't have the money to invest. Maybe you are still a student or you're still, um, you just uh, graduated from school or for some reason you, you don't have the fund to start a business. There are opportunities for idea-based competitions out there, which are quite honestly competitive. So you want to give yourself the options. So if you can, as much as possible, start your business with your own phone. So that gives you, that gives you a, a, a proof that you can take to somebody else, even if it's your family member, your uncle, somebody you know. You go to them and you tell them, this is what I have put into this business. Or even if it's not your money, your time. Probably you built a business, you have uh, uh, you're a developer and you have this idea and you built an app with your skill. That skill is money. It's money on its own. So if you tell someone have invested this amount of time to build this app, it's something. I, I can liken that to your money. So when you go to someone and preferably want money, and this is somebody who you know, somebody who you already have some level of credibility and a social relationship with, family member, friends, colleagues, you ask them to invest in your business. So when you are able to get this, uh, this class of um, money to your business, and you are reaching out to code money, which is someone who doesn't know you, whether they're competition or um, angel investor, as the case may be, have this record. 
So the person asks, okay, so um, who else have you invested in this money? So, okay, this friend of mine has invested this uh, $10,000, $5,000 person has invested. It gives you front credibility and makes the person wants to listen to you other than when nobody else has because we are humans and nobody wants to be the first. Nobody wants to take that first step. But when people see that someone has already taken the step to invest in your business, they are more motivated to want to listen and probably end up investing in your business. So take it in this um, uh, direction, a step at a time, your fund, your warm money, your code money, and uh, even more code money gives more credibility to code money. Because like I mentioned, when applying to um, not ignoring the little grant programs, which gives you some sort of um, credibility when applying for the bigger grant programs.